I was writing for free, and it was cool, but I have better things to do than write about marijuana. I have much more important things to teach the world, so I need to prioritize. I don't have a lot of time. I could go. I could walk outside tomorrow and die. But yeah, you seem like the person that would be right at home with the newspaper. You've got that great vocabulary, right? You get the bachelor's in English literature, right? You say. Obviously, words and writing are in your wheelhouse. You could probably help me out a lot with my writing. Wouldn't mind that. Hint, hint. But uh, exchange of knowledge there. Sorry, I was uh, in the bathroom. But yeah, I, I would consider it a service to humanity to help you with your writing. <laughs> it is too, man. <laughs> it's funny. At this point, I'm trying to you, save the world. You actually remind me a lot... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. You actually remind me a lot of a literary character from a science fiction novel that I recently read. I think the person was named, like, Oryx in this novel. But anyway, like, he's pretty much a sociopath. But he's, like, the most intelligent person around. And so he has this... He kind of went the opposite way that you're going, like... He wanted to benefit humanity by wiping it out with a highly advanced virus that it's one targets option. normal people. Oh, yeah, I like it. Average people. They can actually do that now, too. They've got the technology to, to uh, identify a genetic marker and Five, custom tailor a virus four, that will kill just three, one person. Two, one. Remember. So, That's fucking, crazy. Yeah, it's fucking scary. I mean, most, there's a lot of technology, it's like something, I heard a statistic that only 25% of the accumulated technology that the military and the government uh, figures out, do they release to the public. Because everything else is deemed too dangerous. And, like, with technology and the internet and all of this, um, there's going to be just too much information and people are just going to be able to figure the shit out. And um, that's going to cause a whole bunch of weird shit to happen in our world. And it's, it's, it's going it's to get worse before it gets better. Um, and I, I really do. I, I mean, it's highly probable that a huge percentage of the population is going down. And the preppers and the government, they make their, you know, a missile silo into a bunker. And they're ready to, like, live in the bunker for three years with their family and... Then come out and everyone will be dead and they just they just own everything, that type of thing. I think that that's coming, but I'm trying to prep a whole city. I don't know if I can fix the planet before it's too late and get everybody on board with the shit, but I'm confident that I can get a city that's already taking steps. You know, I'm building off of their efforts already. That's why I moved out of Kentucky. It's because I got tired of people arguing. It's amazing. With me. Yeah. It's um it's amazing to me how much like this fictional character you are because while he was in this book um prepping an entire city for this, he also caused the apocalypse. And uh I'm not saying you're going to do that, but I just the the prepping a city thing reminded me of that greatly. And what he actually did was synthesized perfect human from various uh, genome combination patterns and uh created his own race mm, i like it and uh you should really read this book or listen to an audiobook or something of it it's written by margaret atwood but um i believe there's a trilogy of books but anyway um and one of the interesting things he did to this species he created was eliminated sexual reproduction except for once a year and uh, he would like make outward genetic markers to tell when a female is ready to reproduce that one time. And the reason he did this was he thought that sexual competition was the root of all evil, basically. And it was what caused the alpha beta bullshit. It's really. part of it. It's part of it. I actually, I've got a video that's on the, uh, the horizon that's planned already. Uh, I hadn't decided on a title, but it's something like um, how sex makes you stupid. <laughs> I and like, like that. yeah, and like the hornier you get, the more it impairs your judgment. 
like you're drunk or something and you don't have con you you barely have control of yourself when it comes down to hormones we're victims of our biology we will fucking kill each other to get vagina irrationally and um, if you if you don't turn into a Vulcan escape that or get it out of your system or abandon fucking monogamy because it's it's born out of religion and it's completely unrealistic and we do not mate for life there are species that do we do not we fucking be fucking everybody and everything and uh, ownership of, of a piece of vagina is unrealistic but at any rate it makes us fucking retarded borderline retarded when we are just like desperately trying to get laid and it, it prevents you from being able to think and you know it adds to this like nerves like fuck, fucks up your nerves and shit like this is just it's just not no like I can't I can't even condone it at this point like I want legal prostitution bad and I want I want a low monthly payment and the bitches to be on salary and tested and clean and like we test the the Johns and if they got this, a disease, then we just match them up with other whores that have the same disease. So we aren't spreading diseases around. We're just keeping it with the people who already have it. And, like, eventually we'll get rid of it. Sense. Yeah, and, like, sexual repression is another product of religious morality. And that's what's fucking everything up. I've studied the shit out of this. Like, people trust me. Like, with good reason. Uh, I've had lots of people that, you know, they know that I'm not going to turn them in if they tell me they are a criminal or if they're a pedophile or something like that. Like, I don't like it, but I'm not, I understand that it's a product of a bunch of things and it isn't their fault and they don't deserve to be, like, murdered or raped or, like, go to jail or be tortured or be outed publicly. Now, if they're dangerous and I think that they're, you know, going to try to, like, you know, rape some little kid or a baby or something like that. That's a different story. I'm glad I wasn't confronted with that yeah. choice, though. But at the same rate, they are harmless most of the time. And so I studied, I got to study one hands-on. Of course, I won't mention the person's name. But um, I tried to help them to manifest sexual desire and... Um, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Fetishes like get fetishes for other types of like pornography and sexual stimuli to kind of give them a different focus and outlet for their sexuality rather than this this corruption is what I refer to it as um, and I, I think it is my studies yielded this isn't the only thing that led me to this I'll tell you some other stuff too but um, sexual repression and the segregation of the sexes and like when you're young you know 11 maybe even younger like some kids start young and if you don't allow them to have any sexual outlet they don't get to see any naked girls they don't have anything to manifest and latch on to psychologically associate with their desires uh, uh, and their horniness and me I had my, my stepfather's penthouse I had babysitters that were hot like 16, 17 year old babysitters that would like snuggle with me when I was like 10 or whatever and getting horny. Hell yeah. So I had, I had the right stimuli, right? Whereas if you live in a very religious place where sex is a, is a sin before marriage and it's a, it's a morality thing and you're a dirty bastard and it's discouraged and you can't, you can't be, you know, a, alone with a girl. That's not appropriate when you're young and like they don't let the, the kids have any sexual stimuli so they're dying they're so fucking horny they're ready to fuck a bee's nest any hole will do and so what happens is the first time they get any sort of uncontrollable uh hormones pumping and they don't have any outlet and it, it just it reaches to a boil to a head and then they've got something around them and it's always this something it could be they're always around dudes and so they manifest their sexual desires um, on the male form, just yeah, because that's be all they had. Or feet, or sheep, or yeah, anything. right. Or Alvin and the Chipmunks and the Chipettes, and then they grow up and exactly. they're writing fan fiction porno, verbal fan fiction porno, online for the world to read about Alvin and his dripping monkhood. 
like all the Alvin and Chipmunks and the Chipettes in, a, in the living room, like watching Alvin get his dick sucked by one of the Chipettes. And like, I read like two, three paragraphs of it to a, an Xbox Live party, and we were laughing so hard I couldn't stop. And I thought it was hilarious. And then I noticed there was nine chapters of it. I wasn't laughing anymore. So these are. Jesus. I realized that this is his manifestation of from his sexual repression, and he all he had was Saturday morning cartoons, and. It manifested on a the only female form that he really had access to, which was a female child chipmunk cartoon. So not only is he likely a pedophile as well as having this fixation on this chipmunk cartoon, right? Like he's he's all fucked up. Like he's never gonna have a healthy relationship with any so-called normal girl because he's gonna wanna like. Have her, I don't know, sucking his dick while he's watching Alvin and the fucking Chipmunks or some shit, or yeah, like yeah. maybe maybe he turns into a furry that's also a pedophile, and like he's he knows that he's not accepted, and everyone is putting in his head that he's bad because he hears how people look at things and look at people's sexuality, and he's like, oh, you think gay people are bad? Well, shit, I'm a furry pedophile that likes Alvin and the Chipmunks. Verbal fan fiction porn. I ain't telling nobody shit, and I'm gonna recluse, and I'm gonna get away from society, and never get any vagina. And then it, it's worse because they grow up and they have no chance of getting laid, really, unless it's like a really fucked up girl who's, you know, not only not only is she a little fucked up psychologically, like she's probably a rape victim, low self esteem. Probably a little nasty, out of shape, uh, probably has an STD, and she's a super whore. And then she decides to, like, pity fuck this guy, and then he's, like, in love with her because it's the only girl that ever gave him any attention. And, like, she, whatever, she's she's chubby, and she has good skin, and so she doesn't have wrinkles of old. And it kind of, he can psychologically associate his fetishes and his proclivities with her thin skin, her pale skin, smooth skin, and, like, chipmunk cheeks, right? Wow. So yeah. I was just spitballing right there, adding, I've not thought about it quite that far until just now. And I'm, that actually is more, I'm adding more reasonable, it's more reasonable even now. But it gets worse you know, though, it gets worse. Think about preachers who it, have this thing about molesting little boys. Well, they're celibate, right? Well, um, well, sorry, one moment. Yeah, I, yeah. I really feel the need to strongly interject here. Sure. Um, your example before with the chipmunk girl could even get worse than that. Because, you know, that could develop into this obsession level adoration. And then what happens if she decides that she doesn't want to be in that situation anymore? She gets killed or something, you know? Yes, yes. It could just spiral so far out of control. Yes, yes, you're right. And, like, this is someone who doesn't know how to deal with relationships, has never had one, has never had any sexual attention. And then the only girl that gave any to him, he can't let that go. And so he doesn't know what to do. And his rage takes over and he kills her. And probably rapes her dead body, probably for weeks. Exactly. And like now, I'm now I'm like empathizing with a really fucked up person, and it's kind of scary that my brain can even do that, and it makes me feel fucked up just because I can empathize with this weird shit. It's a curse. Intelligence is a curse. It is. Anyway, so it is. A, a priest, right? Priests are molesting little boys. They're celibate. They have absolutely no options of uh, to have sex and they beat up on themselves for having a sexual thought and they confess their sins they relate it with morality and going to hell and fear so much anxiety and then the only nudity that they're exposed to is a naked baby that they're baptizing they just see little kid bald penis that's all they see all the time for anything nudity they relate nudity psychologically associated with nudity with sex and babies with sex and they're horny and they can't do anything about it and then it manifests on the nearest hole like it's a slow process Fuck. right but i think i have figured out why they fucking do it and so this is just another reason why religion is absolutely fucking garbage you know, and that's I, kind of funny, I mean, just that statement, because I thought verbatim, um, let's call it ten minutes ago, let's just add this to, as, reason number 5,600, why religion has fucked humanity. <laughs> we should make a bunch of memes where it's like, um, number blah 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 reason why religion is fucking over humanity. 
and then just started <laughs> off at like 2010 or 2057 or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> It'd be funny as fuck. I'll probably do it. I make a lot of memes. But, um, like I said, I'm not very popular on social media. The majority hate my guts because they I think they think their right opinions matter. You. Yeah, they think their opinions yeah, matter. Everybody fucking hates me. Yeah, they hate smart people. They hate anybody who sees that they're full of shit.